Tonight is December the 20th, 2015. I have a really nice instrument here. It's an old General Radio 1603A ZY Bridge. Z is impedance and Y is admittance, which is the reciprocal of Z. Uh, why do they do that? Why do we have to make it that complicated? Because ultimately we probably going to want to come up with the impedance, Z in the form of, right there, R plus JX. Resistance plus the reactance. Plus or minus, we don't need to get into all this detail, but that's generally the way we want it. And even uh, simpler than that, we just want to know that Z equals some impedance in ohms. We're not even, we mostly don't even want to deal with the reactance. And I'm going to be using this transformer which is one that I've used before. It's a push-pull 6V6 transformer. Right now, I've got 8 ohms right here across the secondary. I've got the primary. This is the center tap. We're not going to be using it. I've got This would be a plate lead. This would be a plate lead. I've got it across uh, the unknown, and we're going to measure it. You've got to have a generator right here. Input from my generator. This is to our detector. Our generator, we'll be running it. It's just a loss later right here. We're running it at one kilohertz. This little Tektronix SG505 at plus 10 dBm, just so we can get as much as we can out of it. This thing can take up to like 130 volts on the input, so it's 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 pretty tough. And we have our frequency here set to 10 kilohertz instead of one, so that we. Uh, can compress this scale by a factor of 10. Otherwise, it's off the scale and you can't read it. We're having to measure this thing. We're having to measure the admittance of it. And then we'll convert the admittance to impedance. Sounds complicated and it's really not that bad. It does take some tinkering. But first of all, what we do <coughs> is we uh, balance it. We put it in normal. See, it has Y initial balance. And then we go over here and we look at our spectrum analyzer, which is what I'm feeding it into. This is our pulse right here. I know it's tiny, but it's because I've got it nulled. I'm going to throw it just a little bit out of null with these two knobs right here. These are, these are the null knobs right here. See, this one measures uh, ohms or micromoles. This one measures ohms or micromoles. Initial balance X or G. Initial balance R or B. Okay, I'll just I'll I hate to do this in a way, but I'm gonna just turn this just ever so slightly and watch what happens. See, out of balance now. Way out of balance. Okay, so now. I've got to turn it back and get it back in balance as best I can. This is a very, very tiny signal. See, it's easy to go past it. There. Oh, wow. That's, that's, I got lucky there. Okay. So I got it nulled again. So you go through these two right here and null so that you're nulling out all of the uh, reactances and resistances and capacitance and inductance and the whole nine yards of things so that this bridge is perfectly balanced and then you put it over in Y measure and then once you put it over Y measure you leave these two alone it's easy to reach up there and touch them accidentally and then you have to start all over now I've got it nulled it's not a it's not a, a terrible process but it is tedious one of the things that makes it tedious is the sweep right here see how uh, how it's sweeping there you have to make an adjustment and then watch for it to sweep. What we want to do is null this. What's going to happen when I turn these two knobs right here, and here's the vernier for them. I'll turn it to throw it out of whack a little bit. And see, we got another big pulse again. So we, we want to null that as best we can, get just absolutely as close as we can. Oh, that's that. Well, see, I went past it. No. Nope. It's kind of like watching grass grow, huh? There you go. Well, anyway, that's probably close enough. And then we read the numbers. 
Now, what we're doing is we are reading uh, Y, which is the admittance portion of it. And if we look down here, we're reading the, and see Y is in G and B. So we're reading, we're going to get it in the format of YX equals GX plus JBX. So we're reading G, so we have to read this dial right here. Conductance G directly in micro Mohs. Now, a Mo is the word ohm spelled backwards, and it's reciprocal of ohms. The modern day term is uh, semen. But if we read this thing off, it's just about as close as I can read to 130 without being 130. Let's call it 129. So we write this thing down, we say, y x equals 129 um, micromoles and then uh, the reactance part of it right here which is the susceptance because it's the reciprocal of let's see now susceptance is the reciprocal of reactance I know it's crazy. Inductive susceptance minus BX. Remember, see, that's what we're measuring here, BX. So we made the BX, and it's negative, is the scale times the frequency we're driving it with, which is 1 kilohertz, divided by the frequency we have it set for, FO. See, FO right here is 10 kilohertz. We're doing this on purpose. We can drive it at one kilohertz, 100 hertz, a kilohertz, or 10 kilohertz. But if we set this at 10 kilohertz and we drive it at one kilohertz, then we get to divide our scale by one over 10 by one tenth. So it expands our scale. These guys are built this thing for smart. Okay, so if you read this off, you get 120. Oh, 120, just a hair over, call it 121 minus 121 well, it'll be minus J the, the J is the square root of minus 1 that's not really important right now but that's our answer right there and we go yeah well that's just great and what are we going to do with that because <clears throat> we want to know Z that's all we really want to know we want to know its impedance we want to know the impedance of the primary that's what we're after right here with an 8 ohm load on the secondary, what is the impedance of the primary? Well, then you take this thing and you go over here and here's how they show you how to solve it graphically. You plot uh, 10 to the minus 10 to the 6 over BX, which would be this, and then 10 to the minus 6 over GX, which would be this. And when I do that, what I end up with is this graph right here. And then you draw this line, as they say, perpendicular through the origin. Well, when you draw this one perpendicular through the origin, what you what you can kind of see here is you can't do that because it's just too tiny because of the scale. This scale is eighty thousand, and this is only whatever it is. I don't want to I don't, don't want to bore you with all of the arithmetic, but the reactance is so small we can basically disregard it. Now. I want to say this right. Um, impedance is simply the reciprocal of GX if BX equals zero. But BX is so close to zero, as we say, as we can see right here from the little graph that I drew of, of our actual measurements, that we're just going to disregard it. That's what we're going to do. And if we take the reciprocal of 129 micromoles, we do this. We say 129 E6 change sign reciprocal, and we get like 7,751.94 ohms. That's about 8,000 ohms. That's what we would call it. So if we have an 8 ohm primary, I mean, an 8 ohm load on the secondary, our primary, is about 7,800 ohms or 8,000 ohms. 
which is the same thing we get when I've measured it uh, with other devices like this. It's the same number we get when we uh, measure the voltage ratios, which is the same thing as the turns ratio of the transformer. We get the same number again. I think it's just amazing. I love it. It's beautiful. And of course, if we, it'll work out. I don't want to bore you with, with too many of these little measurements, but if we put another 8 ohm resistor across it, then of course our balance will go away and we'll have to rebalance it and then when we read these numbers off again this thing will come out as 4000 ohms just like what you would expect it works now here's something I won't actually make a measurement for but I will tell you this uh, I've been asked some questions about what resistors are better to use carbon metal film etc and I made a measurement of this very resistor um, on a different impedance bridge. Actually, this guy right here, this RF impedance bridge at a megahertz. And this little resistor ended up ever so slightly capacitive. It had a very slight amount of capacitive reactance at a megahertz. Well, if you reconfigure this thing, Put it at 10 kilohertz and drive it at 10 kilohertz and measure its Z directly. You will actually find out that this resistor at 10 kilohertz is ever so slightly inductive. I mean, I think we can all accept that. Uh, a resistor is going to be inductive for some frequencies, a capacity for others, or whatever. That's the way these guys turn out. Now, the inductive and the capacitive reactance of this resistor at uh, audio frequencies, even a megahertz, is insignificant. It, it, it's kind of like disregarding this portion right here. It's there, but it's so tiny we go, who cares? So, back to that eternal question of which one is better, and the, and the real answer is it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just whatever makes you happy. Whichever one you prefer. I don't want to cause a panic so everybody goes out and thinks they should or should not. You know, go from carbon resistors to metal film or vice versa. It's not going to make any difference, is the, is the truth. But anyway, uh, this is a beautiful instrument. I love these general radio instruments. I've seen them all of my life. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to work with them. Even though I had a, a really long technical career, these were not the instruments I worked with. But I always loved them. I believe this one was about 1962, so it's 50 plus years old. These things are just gorgeous. And you know what? I trust these things. I absolutely do. I trust this instrument as much as I, I, I trust any, any of these instruments. And these are, well, these are like uh, 2000. These were made in the years since 2000. The rest of this stuff was made back in the 80s. I think this was a little later, maybe the 90s, late 90s. This is the 1980s. This is a brand new, the 2000 and, I don't know, 8 or 10, something like, like that. Tektronix uh, DMM. And uh, I, 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 I trust these guys right here just as much. They're beautiful instruments. I recommend you get them. Love them. Take care of them. Learn how to use them. Entertain yourself with them. Yeah, that's really all I do. You know, I'm not going to invent anything gigantic. Here's something else I picked up. Another gorgeous uh, GR instrument. And it's just deadly accurate. Here's the, uh, I've got it set right now. Just Here's where you set the capacitance. It's from 100 picofarads to 1100 picofarads. Actually, it goes a little bit past that. It goes to 1150. Uh... There's 1150. I, I think these guys live by the uh, philosophy of do what you love, love what you do, and, and uh, provide more than you promised. I really do. Do what you love, love what you do, and deliver more than you promised. I like that saying. Anyway, when I measure this thing 
on this uh, instrument right here, which I trust immensely, accurate to a picofarad. <clears throat> I end up with about two picofarads of stray capacitors right here, just connecting the two. And uh, I can measure 300 picofarads on this guy. And I'll measure right here, just a couple of picofarads less, like right there at 48, like 200 and, uh, see, that'd be 250 plus 48, it'd be 298. It'll, it'll measure out right there, which takes into account the stray capacitance. It's, it's just that accurate. It's, it's amazing. Well, I hope you enjoy these old uh, general radio uh, type instruments. I don't see many videos out there on them. I think it's because they're a bit complicated and it doesn't seem like hardly any of them. Well, this one does right here. This is a self-contained unit. But many of them like this uh, and this RF impedance bridge, I'm not going to take the cover off. You've seen it in some other videos if you watched any of them. Uh, require other instruments. This thing requires a generator and a detector. And they all look a lot alike, don't they? And they did a really good job. So there you go. It's almost Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Peace on earth. We need it.